Good morning, children. Welcome to all of you for the SPR Public School Online Classes. Sir. Myself is Dikti Chawla and I am handling the physics part of this student. All of you studied in your previous classes about the motion. How the objects are moving from one place to another place. In our childhood, we are playing with the marbles, balls, cricket, football, so many games. In that, all the games are what we are observing. The ball is changing the place. Our way we can hit the ball and it will change the place. So why? Who is doing this? For all these if a marble, we are playing with the marble, marble will change the place. But how? When the two things are come in contact, then only the changes will take place. Suppose one marble is at the resting position and you are standing behind that marble, then the marble cannot change its place. And when you will touch the marble with your hands or legs, our ball, then only it will change the place. So, what are the factors that involve the changing of the place? So, we can say it is the force. Or in our daily life, we are seeing, or we are familiar with so many examples. We are lifting the book from one place and keeping it on the another place. Our marbles, when we are playing on the ground, cricket ball, when we hit the ball. Football, when we will kick the ball with our legs, sir. and other so many examples in our home, we are shifting the things from one place to another place. Sir. So, all these examples, sir, are all these events are possible when we are applying the force from the external source. Sir. So, what this is, sir? this is the force. Sir. So, what we can say, force is a Force is a physical quantity which can change the Once again, I am repeating. Physical force is a physical quantity which can change the place of an object with difference to time. So, what is the force? All of you understand? In our daily life, so many examples I am giving you. Suppose you are playing the cricket. Then what? The ball when will come to the ball. When the baller will throw the ball, the batsman will hit the ball. So, it is greater force. If the force is greater, greater, then the ball will hit for the sixer. If the force is lesser, up less force, then you can score only one or two runs. So that is the amount of force. So the work is done is depends upon the amount of force. How much force you apply on an object? Then suppose sometimes what happens? Force is a vector quantity. What is the vector quantity? When the quantity is having the magnitude and number, then it is said to be vector quantity. So what the force can say? Force is a vector quantity. So magnitude also, or direction, we can say the direction. Force is having the direction. The SI unit of force is Newton. Newton. So vector quantity as those when the quantities are having the numbers, values as well as the direction. So what are the forces can do? So we can say the effects of force.
So I will now first I will give the summary about the lesson, then few examples, then tomorrow onwards I will give you a clear cut and you will go according to the syllabus. What are the effects of force? Can first of all can Please, the students, all of you write the points, sir, because books are not available. Then, can. Oh. Now, all of you not um, copied that force effects of the force. What are the effects of the force? Force can change the shape of an object. First, I will take give you the examples of this. When you will take the rubber ball or any small piece or a wooden boxer or simple cardboard boxer, then what happens if you will press by your both the hands? Are one hand, then what you will tell, what you will observe? The shape of the ball is changed. Or you, you can take some cardboard box, sir, you press it with your hand, sir, and what you will observe? The box will change the shape. So this is why when we apply the force on an object, then the shape of the material will get changed. Then second is the can change the speed. If the ball is moving up and you can apply the force in the same direction, then what happens? The speed of the ball will increase. This is when happens when the when you apply the force on the ball in which direction it is moving. Then only the speed of the ball will increase. Then suppose your ball is moving in the right direction and you are applying the force in the opposite direction, then what happens? The ball will slow down and at last it will stop. Why it will stop? Because you applied the force on the opposite direction. So the ball, the moving body will stop. So we can say, can change the speed. It may be increased or decreased. And one more thing, the force can bring the body rest to motion are motion to rest. Motion to rest. How? Again, I will come to that point. First, all of you understand the can change the speed. It may be increased when you will apply the force in the same direction, then the speed of the ball will increase. But when you apply the force in the opposite direction, the speed of the ball will decrease. Then, can change the direction. Okay. Now suppose you are moving and when the ball is moving in that direction and you are applying the force in the opposite from the opposite direction, then what happens? The ball will not go straight, it will move in that direction in which direction you apply the force. So what is that is the can change the direction of an object. When you are applying the force in which direction? The ball or marble will move in that direction. At that situation, we can say we can say the force can change the direction of an object. But then, last point: the force can do the body from movement rest to the motion or motion to rest. That is the common example. Just how much I chart now only I will come sir. once again. I will come to the starting position. Rest when the ball is at the resting position. What happens? It will remain as such for a long time, for the years or maybe the months or for days. But when you will apply the force from any direction, the ball will move in the same direction. In which direction you apply the force? So what will do? What the force did? From the ball from rest to motion. So that is the uh, anything is at the steady position. Like suppose one box is there. 
it will remain as it is uh, unless and until you apply the force or when you will touch the ball from some external source. Suppose one bo box is there. When you are pushing the ball from one side, uh, then the ball will move in the same direction. So that is the force can bring the objects from waste to motion. Or if objects are moving, ball is moving, then you are applying the force or you are putting your hands there, then what happens? The objects will not move forward, it will remain there and the motion will be stopped. So at this situation, we can say the force can bring the motion to rest. So I think all of you understand by, by these examples, the force can do a lot of work. Once again, I am repeating a thing, or suppose any marble or any bed or ball is there anywhere on the ground or on the table. It will remain as it is a, unless and until some external work we cannot do or we cannot touch it. Then it will really remain there for a long time. So what are, if force is the interaction between those two things? First of all, we can say force is an interaction between the two objects. Suppose marble is there and ball is there. It will remain there. Suppose you are standing back side of the ball, then only the ball cannot move if your presence there. But if you will not touch the ball, then it will never move. So what we, what we can say, force is the interaction between the two objects. It may be anything. Maybe you are touching with the stick up, or with your legs sir, or with your hands sir. Whatever may be the, but force is the force is applied when the two things comes in the context. So what is the two things means the some another physical quantity. What we are why we are saying it is physical because the force is applied from the outside. It is not from the inside. From the inside ball nothing is there. So it will be responsible to, for the movement of the ball. Only the external things, but anything, then so we can say physical quantity which can change the place of an object. When you will apply the force, up, the ball will move from its place, will be in any direction, when in which direction you will apply the force and with reference to the time. So all of you understand what is the force, sir? Then. It is a vector quantity. Why we can say it's a vector quantity? Because of here numerical value and magnitude both are given. So we can say force is a vector quantity. And as a unit of force is neutral. We can measure the force in the terms of neutral. Now in our daily life, so many examples are like cricket ball in cricket ground. When we hit the ball, so it depends upon the amount of force. When we will hit the ball with lot of force, then we can say greater force and it will result in the sixer or any other. Then less force. In some rounds like football, golf, billiards, where we are using the less amount of force. So it depends on what is, whatever the work is done, it depends upon the amount of force. How much force we apply on the object, that much amount of work can be done. Suppose one ball is there. If we apply the force of the 5 Newton, then the ball will cover the distance of 2 meter. Uh, suppose in another example, ball is there. I apply the force of the 2 Newton, then ball will cover only the little bit distance. So amount of work is done is depends upon the force is applied. So all of you understand what are the force and how it is applied and how much work is done? Okay. So now what are the effects of the force? That I explained you very well. Force can change the shape of an object. When the rubber ball is there or any plastic things are there, when you apply the force from you, by your palms, then it will break down into so many pieces. So that is a good example to change the shape of an object. Second can change the speed. Suppose you are in the ground, then your ball is moving. When you apply the force with your leg, then what happens? The speed of the ball will increase. So at that situation, we can say the increase the speed of an object. Suppose sometimes the ball is 
moving on the ground and I want to catch it, then I will use my hands to catch the ball. So I will catch it. At that time we can say the decrease. We can change the speed, that is decrease. The, then can change the direction. Suppose the ball is moving and we will apply the force from the opposite direction or some other direction when the ball will move in the other direction. In which direction we apply the force. Then last one from waist to motion. Earlier I said when the ball is there, if you will not touch from any out of the side, then it will never change its place. It will be remain there for a long time, maybe for the month, year or days. But when you will apply the force from external side, then only it will change the place. So we can say rest to motion or motion to rest. Suppose some books are there on the table and I will not touch it for long days. Then what happens? The books will remain there. Then never it will not automatically, automatically change the place. So this equation we can say rest to motion. But one thing, it is not in the book, but I want to say Motion, uh, rest and motion both are the relative terms. Why we can say rest and motion are the relative terms? Now, this is the definition. Rest and motion are not the separate word. These both words are combined and we can say these words are relative terms. Why we can say it is relative terms? It is not in your text or in your book. So if I am explaining, you can understand very well. Why we can say the rest and motion are relative terms? Everyone is knowing that we are living on the planet. Earth. Earth is only the living planet. Suppose this is the Earth. We are living on the planet and what happens? And everyone, as you studied in the social subjects, the Earth will rotate on its axis. So what we can say? Earth is continuously rotation. Earth is continuously rotate on its axis. On the Earth, suppose our home is there, our school is there, and on the school are in our home, we kept certain things on some books on the table. Then what we are observing to summarize? Books are at the resting position. Suppose I kept some topics on the table, and duster on the table. Then what we are observing? The duster is at the resting position. If I will say, can you observe any motion in the duster? Any motion on the chalk piece? No. Whatever your answer? No matter. So whatever the things are there on the table or in your, in your home, it will be remain at the resting position. And we are observing that it is on the resting position. If I will ask you, then you will also say the same thing. The books are at the resting position. But actually it is not resting position. Why? Because the earth is continuously moving on its orbit or on its axis. So we can say rest and motion are the relative terms. Understand our view? Okay. So that is the common example in our daily life. Anything, your water bottle, tiffin, your bag, whatever you are keeping on the, your benches or on the table. Whatever we can say, it is on the resting position. But actually it is not resting. Because earth is continuously moving on its axis or rotating on its axis. So we can say rest and motion both as the relative terms. Is it clear to all of you? So, before coming to another topic, I want to give some. And suppose we are observing in our daily life. First, there are different kinds of force which we are observed in our daily life. Some force is out in the terms of the pulling the things up, some are in the pushing the things up, some can change the shape of an object, 
and some other type of the force we are observing in our daily life. Then force, mainly the force can be so many types.
Then, second is the magnetic force. All of you are familiar in your childhood when you play with the magnet. All of you know that magnet will attract the iron filling towards the heat. Why it is? Why the magnet will attract? Why all the iron things will not attract the iron filling towards it? Because magnet is having only the characteristics of that magnetic power is inside it and it will attract the iron filling towards it. So we can say magnet is the magnetic power is responsible to attract the iron fillings. But again there are two categories. Contact and non-contact. What do you understand by contact and non-contact? In magnet, what happens when you will bring the north and north polar towards it, then it will repulse. But when the opposite poles are there, then there will be the attraction. So these are the contact when the things are come in contact and sometimes the things are not in the contact. Okay, I will go, we will go on that once again in detail, sir. Then one more thing I want to explain about this regarding to your syllabus is the gravitational force. All of you understand what is about the gravitational force. In our childhood, when the fruits will fall, it will fall on the ground. Why it will fall on the ground? Who is pulling towards the ground? Why it will not go up? There are so many things that when anything falls from your hands, it will fall down. Why? Because the gravity, due to the gravity, the earth will pull all the things towards it, then that is the gravity. Gravitational force is there, so all the things, whatever it may from, fall from anywhere, it will come on the ground. That is the gravitational force. Okay. Then, next is the frictional force. What do you understand by the frictional force? Okay. Frictional force. Now, again we will come from the starting. When the ball is moving up, or a marble is moving on the ground, then what happens after some time, sir? The speed will slow down and at last it will stop. Why it will stop? If nobody touched from outside, no forces is acted from the outside, then the slowly the speed of the ball will decrease and last it will stop. Why it is stop? When you are playing on the ground, you also observe. If you are not observed today, you observe when you throw the ball. When you throw the ball with the greatest force, then it will go, it will move faster, faster, and at last the speed will come down, slow down, and it will stop. Who is responsible? When any force is not acted on the ball, ball is only there, and nobody touches the ball, again it will stop. Why it will stop? Because due to the frictional force. Who studied about this? First of all, the scientist Galileo Galilei give an idea or something about this friction force. And after the Galileo, the Sir Isaac Newton opposed this idea and he took the interest about the rest and motion of the object. Why the objects are moving or why it will stop when the external force is not applied on it. Then he gave some laws and these laws afterward recognized by the world and if these are said the Newton's law. Yeah. Okay, so this is the friction force. Where it acts the frictional force? Friction, frictional force will act on the surface of the marble and on between the surface of the marble and between the and the topmost layer of the earth. Between this, when the force is acted, these forces are oppose the motion, and we can say it is the frictional force. So due to the frictional force, of a moving object will stop after the some time. This is about the friction force. Friction force when the tires are there, that uh, heavy vehicles, uh, why they are having the grooves uh, are in your shoes uh, when you are climbing the mountains or anything there, why they, these shoes are having the grooves? Uh, 
Why? Because if your friction is there, then only you can climb. If the slope are very shiny, are very smooth, you can slip down. You cannot climb up the hill, sir. So when the grooves are there, are different designs are there on the down sole of the shoes, then only the grip will be there and you can climb up the hill, sir. So this is the friction force. So what we can say in the summary or we can say in the short force is any push or pull an object. If object is at the resting position, it will not move from its place. So what is the observation or what is from the today's notes? Sir? We can say force is any push or pull an object then it is said to be force. Then, again the few things about the scientists. Before that, I want to again do it. Small things I want to explain you that is not in your book, but I want to explain because it is related to rest and motion. First of all, the force there are the different kinds of force, but before that, or apart from these, see, I want to say that force can be divided into two categories unbalanced force, and second is the balanced force. All of you please copy the table. You will get the question answers fill in the blanks from these only. First of all, the force can be divided into two categories unbalanced force and the balanced force. Balanced force after a long study by the sir, sir, scientist Sir Isaac Newton, he postulates the three laws. Newton's first law, second law and third law. First law, second law and third law. First law is also known as laws of inertia. Second law is known as law of momentum. Law of momentum. And third law is known as action and reaction. So, again, force can be mainly divided into two categories unbalanced force and the balanced force. Balanced force is again in three categories it will be divided. First, it is postulated by the Sir Isaac Newton scientists, postulate the three laws based on the rest and motion of an object. First law, second law, third law, and these laws are also known as the Newton's law. First law is also known as laws of inertia. Second law is known as the law of momentum. And third law is known as law of action and reaction. These are the main laws and these are the recognized for all over the world. Okay. So today I will take you only one that is the unbalanced force. What do you understand by the unbalanced force? Unbalanced force. Now I am giving you a few examples. Suppose one wooden box is there and you are applying the force from one side. Then the ball will move in the direction where the force you apply. The ball will change its place. Then what we can say, if the force is applied, the things will change in the, its place. At that time, what we are observing? First of all, 
change in position. First of all, the box when we apply the force and then box changes its place. So that is change in position. Okay. Now in second category, if I will take the balance force on the another hand. Box is there, and you are applying the force from equal amount of force from the both the sides. Then what happens? The box will not move from its place, and we can observe sir, no change in position. So, once again I will go for the detail of what is the balanced and unbalanced force. When you will apply the force on the object and if it will change the place, then we can say it is the unbalanced force. But when the objects will not change the place, then we can say it is the balanced force. Again little bit in detail, sir, unbalanced and balanced force are the I want to explain with an example. Suppose you are applying the force. Uh, the force is the 500 newton. Then the box will move from its place. Then if you are applying the force uh, which is only the 50 newton. Uh, then only the little bit distance covered by the object. So we can say the distance which is covered by an object is depends upon the amount of force. Uh, here equilibrium state is not maintained. Second characteristics of the unbalanced force is equilibrium state is not maintained. What do you understand by the equilibrium state? Equilibrium state means uh, not moving forward or not backward, not any direction. That is, is not maintained. Means it, it is moving. So what we can say, equilibrium state is not maintained. It will change from its place. In which direction you will apply the force, the box will move in that direction. So we can say, equilibrium state is maintained, not maintained. Then third is, third point, if you will apply the force, it can change the speed and direction. Change the speed and direction of an object. I think you will understand why these points become from so many times I so many times I repeated the same thing if you will apply the force of any force, any type of force or any amount of force from outside definitely it will change the speed. If you will apply the more force or amount of force, the speed will increase. The, if you apply the less force, the speed will decrease. The direction, if you will apply the force in the opposite direction, the direction of the object will change. So these are the three points about the unbalanced force. Okay, now students, uh, today is up to this much. Uh, when tomorrow I will come, I will start with your balanced force. Uh, and again, few examples about the force. Uh. So before winding up my session, once again I want to recall whatever today I cover the topic, what is the force, uh, the different types of the force uh, in daily life, the few examples from our uh, today's all of you are familiar with the games are uh, cricket, football, basketball. So I gave you a few examples related to these our daily life, our daily sports. In that force is a physical quantity which can change the place of an object or when it comes in the contact then with other um, objects. So, so we can say force is the interaction between the two objects. What are the effects of the force uh, and different types of forces uh, and some rest and motions are the relative terms uh, and something about the types of uh, forces balanced and unbalanced force. So today I covered only the unbalanced force. Tomorrow I will come, I will start from the balanced force and again the few examples that the force can do in our daily life. And we are familiar with all these examples sir. I, and I, as 
possible. I will take the examples from our daily life. So all the things you will clearly understand. Uh, if any doubt is there, you can ask. I am giving you my phone number. If any doubt is there, you can ask. Uh, ask tomorrow in my class. My number is. So I hope all of you enjoy the classes because all the examples I took only from your daily life. Now full days you are engaging yourself and you are doing the playing with the cricket, football or some outside games. Uh, daily you are contact with the ball, marbles and other things. So I think and hope you understand the lesson. So all of you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.